things. First, I, I want everybody knows that there has been a plebiscite and the so-called no one. Uh, I wanted to give a little bit of a context so these uh, <clears throat> negotiations and plebiscite, um, you know, they, in many reports, they say, well, um, there has been a, a conflict for 52 years, for 50 years, and, and the fact of the matter is that there has been war in Colombia since the 20s, you know, starting with the fruit, uh, United Fruit, when they massacre so many bananas. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Um, so I'm not going to go into the whole history, but just saying that, you know, there has been, this country has suffered so much, you know, for generations and generations, has never lived in peace. Uh, and of course, um, in, in the 40s, the, there was the killing, the assassination of a progressive uh, presidential candidate, uh, Jorge Eliezer Gaetan. And after that was in 48, and after that, that opened a period of, of violence, complete violence. And, you know, many people uh, were massacred. But anyway, that's just to the context of that there hasn't been peace in, in Colombia at all. Um, and why is that? You know, there is uh, the oligarchy, particularly the landowners, the terratenientes, uh, that, you know, the state really works on behalf of the uh, this oligarchy. And these are the, the landowners who have for dozens and dozens of years have hired, uh, hired guns um, to keep uh, the workers subdued or to even steal land from from uh, small peasants. So, and that's how the paramilitary started and so on. But putting a, a, a bringing back to the current peace uh, negotiations and uh, peace agreement, um, what was the purpose of the current peace talk? When in, in one side by Santos, you know, what was Santos and the government uh, aim, and the other, what was the insurgency's reasons to go into this um, accord? First, by Santos, President Santos is not a, a, a peace dog, not at all. He, we must remember that he was the Minister of Defense of Uribe and who was the the creator of the um, of the killing of the bombing in Ecuador of Raúl Reyes and the encampment and the four people um, that were you know the students that killed besides you know the uh, Raúl Reyes and other guerrilla members. So this by far he's not a a peace loving uh, person, but he does belong to the part of the bourgeoisie of the of the oligarchy. That it's in that state, they want more industrial development, and um, as opposed to Uribe, hold on, That's, that was my cat. So, sorry, um, as opposed to Uribe, who is more tied to the landowners, uh, who are the ones who hire the paramilitaries. So Santos, what he wanted is to to have some kind of peace, you know, peace of the cemetery, so that he can attract the industries, particularly many U.S. industry and, and mining uh, projects and, and other mega projects that need peace in order to, to develop. Um, so he's not looking for a real peace. He's just wanted uh, to have some, um, Per, at least perceive peace so these industries can come in. So, um, and, and of course, the government could not defeat the guerrilla. Uh, and, and so he was forced, his government was forced to have um, negotiations with, with the insurgency. Now, why, why did the insurgency go into um, negotiations? First, uh, even since the beginning, when they started in in '64, the insurgency always wanted peace. It's not they they didn't go to war just, you know, to go to war. They they wanted peace, and and in fact, 
the FARC P originated in a place of Colombia called Marquetalia, where there were just a few dozen peasants that were attacked by 16,000 troops under what is called the Plan Lazo, which was from the Pentagon. And let's not forget, you know, Colombia is really a, a U.S. need colony. They, you know, we have a, a, a country where the United States has seven military bases, and it's still called the Israel of Latin America. So, um, and by the way, uh, the use, um, um, well, let me take the insurgency and, and, and have also what is U.S. plans also. Uh, for, so the insurgency, they have always wanted peace. We, we remember the Kagwan peace talks and uh, 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 where, you know, they, they were, um, well, even before that, in the 80s, the Union Patriotica, uh, where, you know, they were already um, having, you know, almost a constitution and, and had uh, presidential candidates and, and you know, would, um, would run for uh, different um, posts in, in, in government. And what happened? You know, the government completely ignored that and killed more than 4,000 people from Union Patriotica, that was in the 80s. So that's still so uh, ingrained on the insurgency that, you know, this, this, this is the, the, this threat is, you know, it's always hanging over your head. Um, but right now, uh, there, there has been a serious blow, uh, particularly during the Uribe year, years. And you know, there was the killing of Raul Reyes that I mentioned, then uh, two other commanders, Jorge Briseño and Alfonso Cano, who was the head of, of the FARC then. So that was a serious, serious blow. One important uh, thing is like, uh, uh, it, it was also the high technology of the United States. Uh, this development of of high technology that they were used, that it was used in the jungle. So you can imagine that that's where the guerrilla was based. And, and that's, you know, their hiding places and their secure places. And it's almost like the Vietnamese that constructed these tunnels under uh, the, uh, the, the land, you know, su subterranean. But with U.S. technology, this was like a, a you know, like a stadium with bright lights. You know, there was no place to hide. There were places even in the in the river. Some, you know, some of the compañeros said, you know, in in the river there were like um, there was no place to hide because of high technology. So that that was a big big factor uh, for the insurgency to wanting to have, you know, the uh, an agreement. And a, a, a negotiated uh, end to the conflict. That's how they uh, have called. And it was another fact. People were distancing themselves uh, from the insurgency, and and particularly because of Uribe. Uribe, uh, Uribe's tactic of um, um, uh, seguridad democrática, democratic security, was what he says to get. Um, El, el saca, eh, quitarle el agua al pez, um, to get rid of the water so that the fish cannot swim. You know, I think that's that's how it uh, is sloppy translation. But really, what it meant it was these terrorist um, uh, campaigns of terrorism against particularly the peasants and the indigenous communities that were really the basis, the base, the support for the insurgency. So what happened is that all these massacres, all these uh, terrorism and, and horrible massacres that we have heard how the paramilitaries killed 
people um and and uh, I, I won't go through it now but 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 it was like in a horrible way and in a public way so in order to in, uh, to in, inspire fear so people entire communities abandoned their places so that's how you know the he there was some distances from the people because of the threats of the paramilitaries and and the army you know the army and the paramilitary were Work hand in hand. Um, the other part was also there was a development in the latest years, uh, in the late, you know, recent years of popular movements that were not particularly the indigenous, the Afro Colombians, the um, peasants, the youth and student women. So there was, you know, non armed. Uh, uh, um, in peace of, of this uh, upsurge of the popular movement. And, and of course, the United States, uh, this is the other part, uh, a part of Santos and the insurgency. Let's remember that the government of Colombia works hand in hand uh, with the United States and they really obey to the United States. Many laws, including the ones that um, made the param of, uh, kind of formalize the paramilitaries were designed uh, by the Pentagon. But anyway, the United States has this, um, you know how the right wing is taking over and it's trying to recoup what the popular movements have gained, you know, in Venezuela, including Cuba, uh, Venezuela, Boli Bolivia, Ecuador. But see what they, they it's, it's like a domino effect. They started in Paraguay, they, now it's Brazil, uh, Argentina, uh, Uruguay, uh, with, you know, it's, it's not the Uruguay when when Mujica was, even though Mujica is not, you know, the the the, the progressive that we thought he was, but all these and Honduras, of course, all these all these countries that are have been, um, you know, the 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 left have been suppressed, and there is a lot of repression, like in Honduras. Uh, so the United States wants to use uh, Colombia. Bibia, particularly against Venezuela. That has been the hardest, um, you know, piece. And, and if you see in the news, you know, all this um, um, campaign against Venezuela, uh, which is very real, uh, the, the hostile campaign against Venezuela, and just goes on um, in, in Increase, increasing. So the United States has its own, besides the industries yeah, and having, you know, its its own um, corporations uh, to to be able to work in 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 Colombia without the insurgency having to, you know, uh, mess with them. Uh, th there is this political aim also of toppling Venezuela. So. Um, so in this, I, I, I was in Colombia from, um, you know, mid-September and for the uh, FADIM, Women's International Democratic Federation, and, and I stayed a few days later just, just to get a sense of how people were, were thinking. Of course, this is Bogotá. So Bogotá, uh, you can go to Colombia, you can go to Bogotá, you don't think there has ever been a, a war because Bogotá, it's, you know, it's a metropolitan city and and you don't see the war. And, and many people in Bogotá are not even aware of the um, of, of, of the heart of the crimes of, of the conflict. They, they live like in a little bubble. Um, but what I saw, I saw a lot of, of hope that of people, particularly of youth, uh, they were very, very hopeful that, you know, they wanted to live in, in a country where there is peace, where there is no more war. Um, I went to a souvenir shop. And the woman from from the Cauca, you know, it's not on Bogota. It's one of the places where had convicts, and and she was, you know, we I, I started talking with her, and she she was, um, she said that her, she she was going to vote for the yes in the plebiscite, 
uh, not because she liked the fire, because she said that she, some of her relatives were victims of, of the FARC. But in talking about, you know, the developments and the transnational and the industry, she said, you know, but there are all these corporations that want to get the land of the peasants, uh, of people that she knows. This is, you know, her own experience. And she said, you know, and, and it's now what I'm um, afraid is without the FARC, uh, there won't be anybody who will defend them, <laughs> you know. And this is, you know, these these are the uh, contradictory things, and but it is a fact, and it is it it is recognized by this woman that the only thing that helped prevent more um, damming of the land and and the wealth of this country was the insurgency. And by the way, Colombia is a very wealthy country. I mean, it has so many, so many riches and, you know, m m minerals and, and, and biodiversity and water. And it's just, uh, of course, gas and, 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 and petroleum. It's, um, so it's, 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 it's like all these um, vultures want to get uh, into Colombia, and the only thing that prevented was was the insurgency. So, on um, moving on, uh, on September 26, before the plebiscite, right, the 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 final agreement was was signed in Cartagena, uh, and of course, this was a big you know uh, big deal, uh, concerts, and you know huge. Uh, um, stage with dolls and people, you know, dressing white and all that. And the interest, and of course, heads of, of state, um, uh, Raul Castro was there, and, and many, many, all, all the countries that were accompanying Chile and, and Noruega, Cuba and Venezuela, who were the accompanying countries, uh, hosts and co accompanying countries of uh, for the um, negotiations, for the talks, uh, they were there, and there were like 24 heads of states, between head of states, prime ministers, and so on, and including, um, you know, Kerry uh, from the U.S. Um, but the interesting thing is that when Timochenko is is talking, what uh, it's it's a a, a kafir. Uh, one of these military um, fighter bombers from Israel flew, um, um, you know, um, flew in, you know, throughout just while Timochenko was was speaking. Timochenko is the head of the FARC, so that that was that was not a an accident, you know, um, you know, a, a, a fighter jet flying over this peace ceremony. It's it was very telling, and I remember uh, after in two thousand one, after the, the talks in the Caguan, uh, I remember uh, um, that that was one of the reasons that the FARC um, stopped. The, the conversations then, because uh, they were military planes flying over the Caguan, which was supposed to be a, a you know, a, a no-fly zone uh, in order to, for the um, talks um, to be held. So anyway, that's, um, so going to the plebiscites uh, last Sunday, uh, October 2nd, it was interesting, you know, nobody expected that the, that the no will win. Everybody was expecting that this, the, the, the yes will win. And it was 49.77% yes and 50.22% no. But it is interesting because when they say, oh, the majority of the Colombian people voted for the no, that is BS. This, is, this has been a completely illegitimate plebiscite. 63% of the Colombian people that were 
scheduled to vote, they abstain. 63%. So less than half of the people that were to vote. So 34, that six, it, it, the, the the people um, that were able to that were scheduled to vote was 34 million and of those 34 million 21 million didn't vote didn't vote if you see the the map of Colombia the regions where the conflict has been really uh, felt and uh, has has happened it's it's in the out in the outs you know in the in in the atlantic in the pacific in the um border states in the border states you know or provinces and those were the regions that voted for the yes uh, where there were more victims, where people were were receiving victims, both from from the insurgency or the paramilitary or or the um, the army, they voted for the yes. It was the regions in the center that didn't have conflict. The one that voted, you know, was more predominant the the no. Not only that, but during uh, th that Saturday and Sunday, uh, that's when Matthew was was going through Colombia. So there were entire places that were completely inundated that they couldn't vote. They just couldn't go. Uh, I was watching and the news in Caracol Noticias, and and it was it was impassable. I mean, they closed. They they didn't even open the um, the voting places because it was completely flooded. So there were people who didn't who couldn't even vote. This was not even um, abstain, and and these are regions that would have voted for the yes. These are were places where the conflict was very vivid. Um, and there, there was a report today in Caracol Noticias, which is not a, a, a progressive um, TV, but they, they were interviewing people, and many people were saying, well, I'm, I was going to vote for yes, but I thought he was going to win, so I didn't bother to go and, 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 and win so, uh, and, and vote. So there was all this sense that okay, this this it, it's going to be uh, accepted. So I don't have to bother and and go. Um, there there is another thing also. Um, there was also the absten um, abstention um, abstention of eighty seven percent of the Colombians who uh, are, reside uh, outside of Colombia. Uh, it's in 64 countries where they lived, they, they were able to vote. And 80, there was a, 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 an, an abstention of 87%. And in the, the only three countries where the no won, guess which one? It was the United States, the Arab Emirates, and Paraguay. In all the others where the Colombians um, outside of Colombia voted, uh, were voted for, for the yes. Now, there was an, another uh, part. The religious, uh, part of the agreement of, of the FARC is, the, which is amazing, it's, it's the first time ever in any peace negotiation, I think, that there is the... Um, the, the uh, gender um, um, focus. Um, it's 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 only. I mean, they had meetings with women and the LGBT community. They included um, um, you know their views and their goals within the the fund an agreement so that is very prevalent and they are very proud of that well the religious sector including the catholic church um i don't say all of it but a, a considerable section sector of the religious including the catholic 
voted no. So they sided with, with Uribe because they were against uh, the women's um, and, and, and particularly against LGBTQ. Um, now, today, it's very interesting. There was a, a report um, there was an interview of El Diario La República um, of this person called Juan Carlos Vérez Uribe. I don't know if it's uh, uh, a relative of Uribe, but you know it's, it has both uh, um, last names. Uh, Uribe is Uribe Vélez, and this is Vélez Uribe. But anyway, it's it's a, a popular, it's a common name, but but he he worked with Uribe, and he was the uh, uh, um, manager of the No campaign. And in an interview, he said that, um, that it was based on lies, that the, um, for example, and, and they, they have this, um, that they use the social media that they didn't it, it cost almost nothing even though he went this Juan Carlos Vélez uh, he 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 went to many corporations and you know Colombian corporations to help finance this campaign but he said besides that and I, I don't know how much they got like a million pesos not not million dollars um, but but he said that this strategy was that they found out the power, and, and we should, you know, think about that, that, you know, how to use the social media. Because of the viral power of the social media when things go viral, and so they, they use that. And for example, when they went to Apartado, which is a, a place, uh, a, it's almost uh, bordering with with um, Panama, and and it's a place where furious attacks by the paramilitary. That's particularly it's Afro-Colombian. Um, so they they said that um, he used they they used different strategies. So they went to Apartado. And they they show an a, an image of Santos and Timochenko uh, saying that they were going to give money to the uh, guerrilla, um, and and of course people say they are giving giving money to the guerrillas, and we don't have and it, this is a very poor country, I mean poor region, uh, and and we so so it's like. They, they they use this and they put this in Facebook and they put this in Twitters and and it's it, you know they had it went viral um, so that's how they did that, that strategy and and in different areas and they use different strategies for example they would tell the people the older people that they were going to get take seven percent of their pension uh, to the people in the coast, they said that they were going to be what they call Castro Chavistas, you know, for Fidel and, and for Chavez. Um, they say that to the workers that they were going to, that the FARC was going to earn more than they. Um, to the poor, they would say that they were going to take, get the, take the subsidies away, housing and food subsidies. Uh, to the rich, they would say that they will take the land away. And to the religious, uh, and this is quotes from him, we say that gay people were going to take over the country. So they base all these um, and all these lies and and and. Um, and in Wendos, uh, that was the campaign. That's why the no won, even though it was, you know, again, it was a very uh, small um, number of people who voted. But this this guy, um, um, Bell, Carlo, uh, Juan Carlos Vélez, he told this, and, and this is, you know, I put it on Facebook, uh, you know, the article. 
uh, and of course in, in Uribe um, say uh, no no this this is not true I uh, the Centro Democratico the Democratic Center which is the the structure of Uribe for the for the campaign for the plebiscite campaign say no 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 he he and that's not true. We 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 oriented people what the accord was, and you know. So this 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 came to there. I just laugh when when I heard this uh, when I saw this. Um, but anyway, what is happening now? And Santos yesterday, Santos um, called for national dialogue. Uh, to look for alternatives, and he met with Uribe and Pastrana. Remember, Pastrana was the president during the Caguan um, failed uh, dialogue, and Uribe is, you know, was was before the, the criminal, the paramilitary, who is now a senator. Uh, um, so they 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 met and they were looking for ways to unite and reconcile and in order to get peace. But but really, what Uribe and Pastrana want is a renegotiation to have uh, the guerrilla um, in jail uh, to accuse them of drug trafficking and to prevent them from any political. Um, Post. Those are the three main things, and, and it's interesting, and it's almost um, laughable because Uribe is is a paramilitary. He's the one that, when he, um, when the um, uh, the ALC, the paramilitaries, when he started with the the special law, uh, to really was a law of amnesty to the paramilitary if they demobilize. And as the AUC, uh, Autodefensas Unitas de Colombia, they demobilized, quote unquote, but then the uh, Black Eagles came, Las Aguilas Negras. So they really didn't demobilize, but they got this amnesty. This We're talking about uh, close to 35,000 paramilitaries. They are still around. And who are still killing since the the agreement was 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 signed was in in, in June, uh, there there have been at least seventeen activists killed by paramilitaries, including Cecilia Oy, 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 uh, I, I, I cannot pronounce her, her name, but Cecilia, she's a, an, she was an indigenous leader, something like Berta Cáceres in Honduras. And in she had given, she was from Marcha Patriotica, Patriotic March, and in her uh, farm, she offered her farm to be one of the places where the FARC would go to demobilize. So she was brutally, she was like assassinated by, by stabbing, many stabbing. Uh, that was really horrible. But I wanted to end in a good, um, in a good um, uh, note. Yesterday was most amazing, amazing, and, and if you can get it, uh, um, uh, th there are many videos, and if you go to my Facebook page, I, I have a video there. Um, there was a mobilization in Bogota, and 15 other cities of the countries. These were mostly youth, and these are youth that are saying, you know, we don't want we don't want a country at war, we, we want peace, and we want, and it was, in fact, to support the accord as, as it has been signed. They say they don't want this national pact that Uribe and Santos, they want, they say this is, the, this is the really, and it's called Paz a la Calle, peace to the streets, and that's it. They, we are mobilizing, they, tonight, actually, they had a the second, the third, as People's Assembly, and every Monday they will have a People's Assembly. These they were called uh, through social media, just university students, and then everybody joined. But mostly students, and you can see them. You can see it's it's just very, very, very strong. And I was talking with one of the comrades in in Bogota today, and said this is one of the largest mobilizations in years. Uh, it was, was, you know, the Caracol said 30,000. I think it was much, much more than that because you can see the, the 
you know, the, the big avenues were really up. And they they started, uh, some of the uh, students stayed at the Plaza Bolivar and they started an encampment and they say they will continue the encampment and they will fight for, for the uh, peace. So, okay, so questions for Berta? Or comments mm -hmm. on some of the amazing things she told us? What have other left nations of forces uh, uh, said Cuba about the Cuba. vote, like Venezuela or, and Cuba. or Cuba. Cuba? Oh, oh the, the they are all saying that they are with the government of, you know, with Santos and, you know, that this has been recognized, particularly Venezuela, that this, this has been something that uh, the whole international community uh, supported. So there, there is no reason for this. So the, 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 the progressive, of course, uh, these are the progressive, you know. The United, it's interesting because uh, the following day, uh, on Wednesday, um, the, uh, the United States flew uh, uh, Aronson, who is the uh, the U.S. envoy for the uh, for the talk, who says, "I'm not here to, you know, uh, this is between, you know, the FARC and the government. I'm not, but, but." but you know, he was shipped there, right? Uh, um, so who knows what's going to um, have in, in, in Havana. This this is like an, an ongoing, uh, and I think there is a lot of pressure from the United States and, and from the Uribe. And, and, you know, Santos is not innocent. You know, why does Santos... Uh, and and that's a criticism that the the movement says. You know why does he ask Uribe for a a national front? You know why why, why you know they, they sh he should be asking the people in the street. He should be asking the social movement. He should be asking the you know the political left. And he hasn't. He he went with you know Uribe and and Pastrana, who, which shows you know the the real reasons of why he wanted a negotiation. Now they they want they really want to um, you know uh, completely um, get get the FARC in jail. That that's really what they want. Sure. Uh. What is the, uh, you say something both about the public attitude of the U.S. and the State Department, but also the role played by, by the U.S. and military and CIA in this situation, in this in, the, in this referendum. I don't think she could hear that. You, you I'm sorry. Can can you? What is the role of the U.S.? I, I couldn't. What I heard the, something about this. What is the public attitude of the, the State United Department States, on this? But also, what is the what if what is the what kind of intervention has been made by the U.S. in this referendum? Well, the the, the United States is very diplomatic. These are things that they don't say. They say that you know they are observing, that they are helpful. Uh, one thing that it's 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 known is that there are all these NGOs that are from um, USA, then, you know, all these known right-wingers from the State Department, the CIA, um, getting ready to go into Colombia, if they are not there already, to, to, to help on the establishment. For example, the, uh, you know, the different agreements like the land uh, distribution and all that, um, so the, all these NGOs from the United States are are ready to to go there and and help, uh, and you know what that means. Um, so, but but it's not they it's not it's not public. It's not you cannot see it. Uh, you know you just you can just. Uh, read between the lines because you know um, U.S. role supposedly is just to you know support it, whatever that means. But you know what that means to make sure that <laughs> you know that they at least are are listening and know what it's being uh, taught and planned, so they can plan ahead. Okay. 
Sharon. Director, first I want to thank you for your analysis of the situation and having an eyewitness report back, which is very helpful for comrades here to hear and also will get posted so other comrades outside this room will also hear it. But I think the most important thing, or at least winding up, was the revolutionary optimism that's shown by the students taking into the streets <laughs> and moving forward with a leap forward that shows that there's tenacity and determination to fight for a socialist move forward in spite of the repression and what's going on, but this is very hopeful. Right. Well, thank you.